Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darylin and today we are going to be talking about all of the different strategies that I use to keep plants in high humidity. Now, last month, back during Vlogsmas, I think, I posted a video all about my grow tent, the setup, and how I keep plants in there, and the results that I get from using that setup, and the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. It sounds like a lot of people are running out to get grow tents, so that's exciting. You guys are going to enjoy that a lot. The other, like, consistent feedback that I got on that video was either A, I don't have space for something like that, or B, it's an eyesore it's ugly. I can't abide the aesthetic intrusion into my sacred design space. And you know what? That's fine. I hear you. Maybe you don't need something like that. Maybe your plant goals and your collection is completely fine without some sort of super high humidity vessel that's going to supercharge your growth and help you with acclimation and propagating and all that. And that's totally fine. Like nobody knows your needs better than you. However, I will say <laughs> again, because I know know I've said it before on this channel that when you are acclimating plants from import, propagating plants, rehabbing plants, especially when you are acclimating plants with damaged roots that have come to you via the mail, high humidity is going to be the difference between getting a plant that bounces back seamlessly and is giving you a new leaf in a couple of weeks to a month or having a stump and having to start over completely from nodes. So I guess for those of you who are anti grow tent, this is for you because while some of you may just really not need that, for the rest of you, I have a feeling that you're just being a little bit stubborn. And how do I know this? Because I used to be stubborn too. When I first got into plants and started getting more of the expensive kind of uh, more tropical aeroids, I was convinced that I could just be the best plant parent ever and I was gonna baby my plants and I was gonna get them all growing and thriving in low humidity. And you know what? That's possible, <laughs> but you have to have a healthy plant with established roots before you can actually acclimate them to low humidity. You cannot just pull up a plant that's in shock and has lost all its roots into low humidity and expect it to, to thrive. You need the high humidity vessels to help with acclimation. So for those of you who are anti-grow tent, here are some of the other things that I use. They have varying degrees of flexibility, but if you can't do the grow tent, some of these may be your next best option. So here we go. Okay, so generally people who do not want a grow tent but want similar results to a grow tent generally want the Millsbow cabinet. It's an IKEA greenhouse cabinet. It's, you know, got glass panels. It's very sleek and minimalistic. It's a beautiful piece of furniture, but setting up a Millsbow is a lot of money. The second thing I guess you could go for if the Millsbow is too much and you absolutely don't want to grow tent would be an indoor plastic greenhouse, the ones that are like fully clear. I know a lot of people use these. The benefit of these is that they are very inexpensive and there's plenty of room inside of them for things like fans, grow lights, shelves. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. You can go inside. You can even like, you know, kind of style it. So maybe you can go inside and have like a chair and hang out in there. But I guess the downside would be is that they're not as all containing as a grow tent is. So like with the grow tent, you have the tray insert that goes on the bottom that keeps everything inside contained, including the moisture, the humidity. A lot of those greenhouses, they don't have a bottom on them. So if you're keeping them over the top of carpet or your floor, you may either need to put something down or accept that your floor may be damaged. Of course, the Millsbow cabinet and an indoor greenhouse are not going to help the folks out there that can't have a grow tent because they don't have space. So if you don't have space for a grow tent, you're not gonna have space for a Millsbow or an indoor greenhouse either probably. So in that case, if you are both or either space constrained or against the grow tent for aesthetic reasons, some of the other things that I use in my house personally that I've had success with are first and foremost a tabletop greenhouse. I have a tabletop greenhouse. I keep it in my living room and I use it to rehab plants from import if they're more or less healthy. I also use it as kind of an overflow staging area for plants that are coming out of the grow tent but that I don't want to shock by just putting them straight into regular humidity. A lot of times I will take the anthurium that are in the grow tent and before I try to transition them out into 
to open air where the humidity tends to be in like the 60 to 65 percent range i'll put them into the tabletop greenhouse so does the tabletop greenhouse work absolutely i have most of the plants that i got at the last few aquadenera pop-ups in there and i also have some plants that i was given by a friend a lot of really you know coveted high value deer plants to my heart are in there my florida beauty has been absolutely thriving in there anthurium serenoi i have some splendids i have filled engine luxuriance multiple different types of viracosum the tabletop greenhouse is powerful enough that a lot of plants are putting out aerial roots and i've had success rooting plants in all different mediums in there including leca moss water pond all the different genuses that i've ever put in there i've done fine so i've had success with anthurium philodendron syngonium hoya basically anything that i've put in there has done really well and another pro of the tabletop greenhouse is that it is disassemblable and you can store it very easily because all of the different uh, metal poles that support the plastic top come apart and you can store it very compactly and so if you only import plants you know every once in a while and you don't feel like you need something that's going to be set up all the time this might be a good option for you because it's quick to set up it's quick to take down and the other thing that i really like about this tabletop greenhouse in particular is that it is very tall it's about oh I'll, I'll put the dimensions on the screen i don't remember exactly how tall it is but it's tall enough for things like queen anthurium things that you need to prop up on something to let the leaves hang down it's big enough my florida beauty i showed that in the previous video it's probably like you know this tall it's in there it still has room to grow so that is really really nice because most of these other options are not going to be able to accommodate plants that are taller than about you know eight to nine inches so tabletop greenhouse is really really awesome if you are in kind of a situation where you need something that's going to get the job done but you can't have it out all the time i really like this one but there's a lot of other options this one in particular i would say that the downsides to it are that since it's all in one piece and you basically just pick it up and and put it back down it doesn't have a door or anything like that it can be difficult to take off the plants and put back on when it's full and it has a lot of stuff inside of it it also doesn't have airflow on its own. You either need to take it off often enough to air it out or you could put a fan inside but at the same time that's taking up space and you know just picking it up and, and putting it back is for me it's manageable enough. So that is an idea I highly 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 recommend looking for tabletop greenhouses. Make sure though that you double check the dimensions because if you order it and it's too short for the plants that you want to put in it, it's not going to do you any good. So the second alternative humidity vessel that I use that I want to talk about today is my little glass terrarium. Now I think that the number one kind of pro to the small glass terrarium is that it is very aesthetically cute. It looks really nice on a shelf. I actually got it because I had a whole bunch of different little seedlings and baby plants and they were just clutter everywhere and I wanted them to look more contained and just have a more streamlined look on my shelf and that it did the trick immediately. It's definitely very aesthetically pleasing if that is a priority for you. And it works really, really well for plants that fit inside. The downside to it is that it is very small and mostly it's very short. I think that the dimensions of mine, and of course you can find bigger ones, but even the biggest glass terrariums that I've found, they really only get to be about... I want to say like 18 inches tall and at that point you start to get into the issue with space once again there are other you know more elaborate terrarium options out there some people will convert things like reptile enclosures from brands like exoterra into plant vivariums but once again you're starting to run into having issues with space and maybe it's not the aesthetic look you're going for because they do look like you know reptile enclosures so the little glass terrariums are really 
are really cute. They're great for seedlings. They're great for propagations. The one thing that's kind of a pro and kind of a con with them is that I at least have found that they're not fully sealed, meaning they're not fully airtight or watertight. So that means that if you're watering your plants and some water escapes, you know, overflows the, the reservoirs or your plants have um, holes in the bottom of their pots, it does leak out of the terrarium. So I learned that the hard way when I originally put perlite in the bottom of mine and it was always leaking all over the place. Sphagnum moss probably wouldn't have the same kind of issue, but that I find to be really annoying how much it leaks. Even though it's not sealed, you do still have to open it up to let air flow in. I will open up the container. I try to every day and just kind of, you know, shake the lid back and forth so that some air gets in there. Certain plants need that more so than others, but I think it's great. They're also, you know, pretty reasonable price. They are made of glass. So I think I see them usually in like the 60 to hundred dollar range, depending on how ornate and how large they are. But if you are someone that has a lot of little begonias or some other like anthurium seedlings. I put my anthurium seedlings in there and they love it. They do great. Or just some other, any other plant that you'd like to have more humidity and don't need a ton of space. These little terrariums are a really great choice. Once again, with something like this, you are going to run into the issue of what are you going to do with it when it outgrows it. But if you're someone that has a mills bow and you want your mills bow to be, you know, your display case only, you don't want to have all your little propagations in there. These little glass terrariums might actually be a good choice for a staging area to put all your little propagations, keep those separate, keep it looking neater so that then in your mills bow, you can actually just keep your big showy display pieces. All right, so next, and this is something that I've shown on here before, and that is jars. So jars are not going to work in every case because the airflow that can come in to your plants is very, very limited. But for some plants, jars will work really well. This in here, this is my Anthurium splendidum and it's doing really well in this jar. This, however, is a plant that doesn't really need a lot of airflow, so it does well in a jar. A lot of, I believe, begonias do really well in jars, and also they would probably work really well to propagate nodes, but again, you would have to be very, very diligent about making sure you open the jar to let airflow in. This is a, one of the very few plants that like really doesn't need a lot of airflow, so the jar is working really, really well for this, but it's not going to work as well for everything. And then the other issue that you run into with a jar is that they're small. You know, this is a one gallon jar and it was not easy to find. I scrolled through Amazon for, I don't know, a while looking for something that would fit this plant and I found this. Then now, as you can see, this plant is already outgrowing the jar and it was even harder to find a two gallon jar. And I really need to move this plant because it needs more space, but the jar has definitely gotten the job done. So if you can get advice from somebody that knows a lot about the plant that you wanna keep and they advise that it's okay to give it very limited airflow, a jar might be a really good option for you. There's lots and lots and lots of different types of jars that you can use. This is actually a food jar and I chose it specifically because I liked the wooden lid on top. Um, I've seen people keep plants in glass cookie jars. I actually have another one. I'll show you really quick. This is actually another Anthurium splendidum. It is a tiny little baby, but it's in this little cosmetics jar. I got this at, I believe, World Market um, to keep like cosmetic type things in and I ended up not needing it. So I've got my little Anthurium Splendidum in there and it's really cute. And another cool thing about the jars that have the opaque lids is that if you have a plant that doesn't need high light, like Anthurium Splendidum, they do better in a little bit less light. This will act as like a shade so you can still keep it, you know, I can keep it on these shelves here that have the grow lights on every shelf and the lid acts as a shade. So I find that to be really helpful as well. But 
You don't need to get something fancy if you're trying to save money. You can use mason jars, you can reuse jars from food if they're big enough. And if you find that the lids are a little bit too tight and restrict airflow a bit too much, you can actually just, instead of using the lid, use a piece of cling wrap or saran wrap or Reynolds wrap, depending where you live, what it's called. But yeah, I, I really like being able to do this for the plants that it works well for because I think it just looks really nice and the plants do really well. So that's that. And then some other more like makeshift types of things that kind of work the same way as a jar is I have this uh, votive candle holder and I just keep it covered with some saran wrap. And this is really old saran wrap. I should probably replace it, but, and as you can see in here, I've got a number of anthurium propagations, some queen anthurium, and yeah, they do really well. They are just kinda, kinda chilling and growing and you know, it's, uh, it's working really well for me and I just leave them in here until they basically don't fit anymore, but I don't know that I'll be able to really show you that well, but. Yeah, and I just keep this under, you know, my grow light and that works really well too. These though, I do take the plastic off. I try to at least once a day to get some airflow in because World Quianum especially really need airflow. So jars or, you know, a makeshift situation that, <laughs> that, you know, kind of acts the same way are really, really good too. And you just gotta make sure that you know how much airflow the plant that you're trying to keep needs. Okay, so now let's talk about propagation boxes. So prop boxes work really, really well if you have a lot of small plants or nodes or propagations or cuttings that you want to keep in high humidity all at once. It's absolutely essential that you either get a clear box or if you don't have a clear box, I suppose you could probably put like a strip light or something inside of it. But I think a clear box is uh, much, much easier. <laughs> I've recently bought a couple of propagation boxes because because I've been taking a lot of propagations for hopefully the shop eventually. And so I've got a lot of plants in there. I find them to be really easy to use and very effective. You do run into the problem once again with airflow. However, you can definitely drill holes into the plastic to help that out. And you can also just open in the lid and you know, I kind of like fan the lid a little bit over the box to kind of get the airflow going. I do find that I find water on my leaves and my prop boxes a lot. So it's definitely a challenge to make sure that you don't end up with leaf damage because of excess moisture. Other thing with a prop box is that because you have so many plants in there at the same time, pest control is mandatory. You definitely need to be monitoring your plants to make sure that anything that you put in there is clean and doesn't have any pests. If you get a pest in a prop box, I mean, good luck controlling that. It, basically everything in there is going to get infected in all of your substrate and you you may just end up having to start over. So that is something to keep in mind, but generally prop boxes are really easy, really low maintenance. If you are lucky enough to have maybe a wall in a room that gets a lot of good light, you can honestly just stack them up and you know the light will come in and take care of it and they're really low maintenance. And you can also use prop boxes to acclimate plants from import as long as they're big enough. And when I was looking for prop boxes the other week, I went to Target and I had a really hard time finding any that were clear, that had a clear lid that were tall enough for the plants that fit into my mini greenhouse. So I think that prop boxes are a really, really good strategy, especially for cuttings, propagations, anything like that. And if you can find them that are the right size, they will absolutely work as like a makeshift greenhouse to acclimate imports. But they're also not collapsible the same way that the mini greenhouse is so if you only want to use them sometimes and you have a very very limited amount of space you're gonna have to find a place for the prop box to be even when it's not in use it's pretty much gonna take up the same amount of space you can stack multiple of them and then they take up the space that one takes up but they're gonna take up more space when you're trying to store them than something that's completely disassemblable such as the tabletop greenhouse okay so then last but not least uh, this is kind of what I do when I am really low on space. I don't have any place that I can put new stuff or it needs to be quarantined or just in a pinch, these will work. What you can do is you can get the clear plastic cups 
that, you know, like drinking cups that people buy for parties, or you can even use a drinking glass if, you know, you have extra. And then, you know, put whatever in there and you can just put saran wrap over the top of it. And even if the plant is too large to fit into the cup, if you just put saran wrap over like the nodes that you're hoping to sprout roots, a lot of times that will work. Another thing too that you can use are plastic bags, like the Ziploc bags. And I normally get them at the one gallon size. And so that works for, you know, small plants and cuttings and things like that. But I think I've seen that they do come in up to a two gallon size where the bag is still clear. And so that will definitely fit larger plants or you can just take the bag and kind of like stick it over the plant like a makeshift cloche. So that is definitely very cost effective and will 100% work in a pinch. You can also take two of the cups and kind of put them together and then tape them. But that isn't gonna be a very good long-term solution because you're gonna have to like unstick the tape every time that you need to give the plant some air and the plant's not gonna be able to grow in there for very long. So of all of these different things that I've mentioned, if I had to pick one that I think is the best and most versatile that you'll get the most use out of and get the best results from, I would definitely say it is the tabletop greenhouse. And that is simply because it is large enough for actual plants. It's not something where I have to kick plants out when they outgrow it. It's something I can keep the plants in until they're ready to leave. It also being plastic, it doesn't get as hot in there from the natural light and sunlight that's coming in as maybe glass would. And the fact that I can take it apart and store it like completely out of the way, it takes up very little space, is so nice. So if you are desperately in need of some sort of humidity implement, maybe you have a plant that just arrived that didn't ship well, or you imported something and it has no roots, or you know, you need to take a bunch of cuttings off of a plant that's dying to try and salvage it and you need something, I highly, highly recommend a tabletop greenhouse. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them probably at a lot of garden stores. They're usually between like 30 and $60, depending on how big they are. And a a lot of them are actually designed to be used outside, but you can use them inside too. So that is my recommendation. I find that that's one of the pieces of plant equipment that I, I always am glad that I have on hand. So that is just my little two cents on that. I hope that's helpful for any of you out there who do end up, you know, going ahead and getting some sort of new humidity setup. We would love, love, love to hear about it. Don't forget to use the hashtag plant friend down the street on Instagram if you want me to see anything that you post, because I do go into that hashtag every couple of days. And then um, just quickly, I also wanted to make a little announcement. You may see the frequency of uploads become a little bit less consistent over the next couple of weeks to months. That is because I have started a new job. And during kind of the initial bit of getting used to, you know, my new schedule, I don't know how much time I'm going to be having to film and edit and whatnot. So I'm definitely committed to posting at least one video a week. But the Tuesday video, video, if you don't see one, it may just not be coming that week. So that's all. And then another thing too, is that there may be another giveaway coming in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. And then yeah, that's everything that I've got for you today. Thank you so much for chilling with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.